Welcome to Piano Video Lessons, Year 1, Unit 4. First, a big thank you to my patrons for your continued support. Find out about the benefits of becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month by clicking the info card. In today's lesson, we're going to learn to play F major, G major, and C major scale. This is video number 64 on YouTube, and it's lesson 16 of Unit 4 at PianoVideoLessons.com. If you want to come on over to the website, you'll find all of the lessons there. Um, so we're going to today learn how to play scales uh, using one hand or both hands. So something like this. So if you tuned in to the previous lesson, uh, lesson 15, video 63, uh, we talked about how to build these scales. And so some people like to think about things in terms of notes. So we can just write out here the notes for the C major scale, which I'm sure you know because we've been playing this forever. Um, you can also write it right here on the piano. Uh, G, A, B, like so. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could we're going to play it on the piano, so there's something else we could write on here. So let's write, uh, let's play it first, and let's first discover, I guess, that we have eight notes here. Pentascales were easy. We have five fingers, there were five notes. Okay, well now there's seven notes and eight really in total if we want to get to C at the other end. So what we start to realize is that we, we aren't octopuses or octa octodactylus. So we need to use extra fingers to get there. So eight is the total and we have five. So if we have five, what can we add to five to get eight? Um, we can add three. Okay, so here's what we do. We play one, two, three, and then we do this trick where our thumb passes underneath our hand and plays the note F. And then the rest of the hand settles in to play one note per finger. So we have this thumb cross under to F, which brings our whole hand over. That's pretty sneaky. So we're just going to tuck under and come all the way up. Now coming down, we would use the same fingers, and then we ran out. So 5 plus 3 is 8, so we're just going to roll over our thumb to play our 3 on E, and then just realign our hand to finish the notes. So 3 plus 5 is 8, and we're going to see that we have 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's something else you could write on this piece of paper here. So this is your right hand fingering for the C scale. So we could also try to play this for the left hand. And we could start on C, because we have to, just like the pentascale, but then we wanted to get all the way up here. So we started off with our five, and we played these first five notes, and there were three left. And then we're just going to roll over our thumb to play three, two, one. So the same thing happened that happened before. It was uh, five plus three. Five, four, three, two, one. Roll over. Three, two, and for the C... We have one. So this is your left hand fingering. And so on the way down, we would have one, two, three. Sneaky thumb is going to tuck under here to G, and every finger is going to realign itself coming down. All right, so this is actually the standard fingering for many major scales and many minor scales also, which is for the right hand to play uh, 3 plus 5 and for the left hand to play 5 plus 3. So this works for the C major scale and it's going to also work for the G major scale. So if you recall from our previous lesson, uh, the major scale of G, can't really talk and write at the same time, I start to write the things I'm saying. Does that happen to you? Maybe you don't try to write when you're talking. <laughs> Normal people don't try to write when they're talking. Teachers, we sometimes have to do this. Okay, so we know the notes from the G scale. If you don't know those, check back to so lesson 15. We discovered that it has an F sharp. So when we play this, it's got eight notes, just like before. We can start on G, and we can have one, two, three. And right away, we can bring our thumb under to C. And then we have enough fingers to go where we're going. So we have G, A, B, thumb under to C. And then I can reach this F sharp with my finger four. Coming back down, same notes, ran out of fingers, roll over your three. So three is always playing the note B. 
3 is always playing B, 1 is always playing C. Finger 4 happens here on the F sharp. So just take it easy and give that a try. Left hand, same fingering we just used. I'm going to play it nice and low here. We're going to play our five fingers, and we ran out, okay? So we started with five here on G, and we played five, four, three, two, one. We ran out, so we need three more notes. We're going to bring our three over to E, and then we have F sharp, G. So again, five, four, three, two, one, three, F sharp, G. Notice I slid in. When I got to my three on E, I slid along the keys so I could play my F sharp without um, twisting my arm around. I reached it more easily. Coming down, same thing. I'm going to start with my one on G. One, two, three. Sneaky thumb is going to tuck under here to play D. And that's standard fingering for left hand scales. Okay, let's try the F scale. So we learned in our last lesson it's F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. Look at that. See, I said what I was writing. It worked quickly. Um, let's play the pentascale. That did not get us all the way to F, so we have to add more notes. So we're going to start on F. Five, four, three, two, one. We know we need eight all together, so we're going to roll our three over to this D, and then we're going to play E, F. Do that again. Five, four, three, B flat, C, three comes over, coming back down, one, two, three, sneaky thumb under to C, two, right away to B flat, going down to five. So we're still using the standard fingering. Three on E, D, tucking thumb. There it is. All right, so now let's look at the right hand. When we play the right hand, we're gonna start with our one on F. There's our pentascale. Now, something weird happens, okay? Normally, we've been going uh, 3 plus 5, so we go to finger 3, and then we bring our thumb under. But if we try that here for this F scale, it's really not comfortable. 1, 2, 3. Okay, my next note's B flat. That means really getting in here to put my thumb on this black key, which could fall off. We don't want that to happen. Um, so if we do standard fingering, it's possible. It's just not comfortable. So we have adapted a different fingering pattern to play when uh, the black key interferes with this thumb under. And what we do instead is we play a different combination of equals eight. So three plus five equals eight, five plus three equals eight, uh, two plus six equals eight, but I don't have six fingers, so that's not helpful. Um, something smaller than five that equals eight added to another number. So four works, okay. What do I add to four? in order to get eight. Four again. All right, so four plus four is eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to play this finger. I'm going to have four. One, two, three, four. Tucking my thumb under to my next note, which is C, and then play the other four. So four plus four is eight. And Pinky just was a spectator along for the ride. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four. Tuck to C, two, three, four. So that's what that ended up being. One, two, th oops, I started on C. I mean, start on F. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back down on the same fingers. Roll over your thumb and put your four on the B flat. So now we can play this with a steady running rhythm. And you can see here that it's four plus four is eight for the standard F major scale fingering. Uh, if you want to, you can look at this as a written set of notes. And you can write it out yourself. Here's the G major. You'll start to want to know what this looks like because you'll want to recognize when you're playing a scale in music. you can write out the G and the F scales down below uh, and then practice them with your left hand.
So that's your finger, Jim, and this is the last lesson for Unit 4. In Unit 5, we're going to be really digging into playing with chord harmony and functional chords. Uh, we've been really, we've covered a lot of what you need in order to read music, and coordination takes some time to build, so we're going to continue building coordination while playing chords in the left hand and reading in the right hand. Um, and really just keep practicing the things you've learned in the past. Look for new music. Now that you can read every note from the bottom of the bass staff to the top of the treble staff, now that you have an idea about sharps and flats and you can count in three, four time and four, four time and, you know, eighth notes and quarter notes and half notes, there's an awful lot of music that you can learn to play without me that you can just find on the internet or buy a book at the store and dig your way through it. Um, so don't don't restrict yourself at this point to only learning curriculum materials. Try new things and branch out. Um, these major scales, these finger drills and major scales are going to help become, give you more dexterity when moving into new positions on the piano. And when we come back after our chord unit, unit five, when we come back in unit six, we're going to be finding ourselves playing a few new rhythms and moving around the piano more in different key signatures and in different positions. And it's going to start to feel a little bit harder. We might even call it intermediate. Um, uh, early intermediate at least. But for now, um, really just start building your dexterity and your coordination and your understanding of chords and your understanding of what a scale is and what why we play in a key and why we might transpose to a different key. And hopefully these concepts are making sense to you because this is the foundation of music and it's going to build you towards bigger and better things as you continue to learn. So awesome again, guys. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you've been leaving me some comments in all of these uh, comment sections of the videos on YouTube. And if you're following along on pianovideolessons.com, you may have seen our Patreon link on the side. There's some perks for you if you'd like to sponsor me on Patreon. If you'd like to become a patron, you can get some discounts. You can get some early information about courses as they come out uh, in the future. And uh, you can just let me know that you really value the work that I'm doing here. Mostly it's free. Um, all the videos videos are available here on YouTube for free and the printables, there's a small fee for those, but um, I'm really hoping that you find them useful and if you don't want to use them, you don't even need them. So, well, you don't need them, but they help. Let's face it. All right, so uh, we'll see you in the next unit and uh, thanks so much for watching.